And a short time ago, I was joined from Kabul by one of Afghanistan's most powerful businessmen, Saad Massani. He owns the nation's most popular TV and radio networks, along with other media and advertising interests. Saad Massani, what impact do you believe that Rabani's assassination is going to have on the peace negotiations with the Taliban? Well, I think that um, it will either stop it completely um, or suspend it for a period. I think that's what certainly the Afghan political establishment is expecting uh, from the president. Uh, he's due to speak to, to the media today, so we'll, we'll find out soon enough. What would make the difference, I guess, between a suspension and stopping it altogether? What do you think needs to happen? Well, I, I think it's going to be very difficult for, for the president to justify uh, doing what he's been doing over the last uh, year or so uh, if it's not going to you know, provide us with any results. Uh, you know, they seem to be you know, going backwards in terms of uh, security and, uh, and uh, discussions with the Taliban. The Taliban are certainly not in any way uh, more positive vis-a-vis -vis talks. Uh, so it's, it's, it's going to seem ridiculous to keep on going when you're losing people, when you seem to be losing the, uh, the, the momentum in the provinces. The Taliban seem to be more belligerent and more confident than ever before. And also, it's going to be very difficult for the president to justify doing this uh, with, his, with his political partners, in particular the non-Pashtuns uh, who've been uh, within his coalition for the last 10 years. Why do you think that, uh, in your view, the progress of the Peace Council so far has been rather limited? Well, to be honest with you, I don't think they've had really a cohesive effort um, uh, when it comes to talking to the Taliban. Uh, they've had parallel talks through different, uh, different bodies, different individuals. They've had the Peace Council, you have various diplomats, you have the National Security Council, the Afghan one, all engaged uh, in talks with different people. Uh, through different forums, and the Americans also are conducting their own talks. So it's, it's, it really has been all over the place. I think that there is no coordination between these different individuals and different bodies. And to be honest with you, the Taliban sensing victory uh, with uh, obviously uh, international withdrawal in sight are reluctant to pursue uh, talking to the Afghan government. Time is on their side. The Rabani assassination is the latest in a string of pretty spectacular um, attacks in Kabul recently. Are these things coordinated, and if so, who is behind them? Well, I, I think a lot of people uh, assume that ultimately the buck stops uh, with the Pakistani military and its uh, intelligence arm, the ISI. Uh, obviously, the Taliban is seen as an instrument uh, uh, of the ISI. So uh, most Afghans, uh, and of course a lot of internationals nowadays as well, are blaming the Pakistani uh, ISI for, for obviously coordinating um, some of the some of these um, terrorist acts. I mean, that's what we could we could call them. Uh, and they've been uh, they've been on the rise over the last six six or so months. They've really upped the ante. And I think you know worsening uh, of U.S. Pakistani ties have certainly have also contributed uh, contributed to to increased violence uh, in in Kabul as well as the provinces. When uh, I last interviewed you about a year ago on Late Line, you spoke about the endemic official corruption in Afghanistan, that people in senior levels of government there aren't held accountable for what they do, that they think they can get away with anything. Have you seen any improvement on that front over the past year? Not really. And why do you think that, that is the case? Well, a number of reasons. I think first and foremost, I think the government um, and it, it, its key uh, leaders don't recognize and acknowledge the importance of governance, the importance of account, uh, being, uh, being held to, to account, their responsibility uh, when it comes to the Afghan public and their constituencies. Uh, they have no sense of urgency in dealing with these important issues. And also because the international backers of this government haven't really uh, taken advantage of the leverage that they have. Uh, with, the, with the president and his cabinet. You spoke before about the Afghan security forces. How far away do you think they are from being able to actually manage Afghanistan's security to a satisfactory degree? Well, I think they're getting there in, in, uh, in some areas and in, in some respects. Uh, but it, it's a big ask. It's a big country of 30 million people, the size of France, very mountainous, very difficult terrain. It's going to take a, a, you know, at least another decade a bit before they're up to the task. I don't think the internationals, and particularly the Americans, are, going to, are willing to abandon Afghanistan in 2014. They will continue remaining engaged by having special forces troops and their intelligence people, um, which will help uh, the Afghan state. But 
it's an ex expensive and, and, and it's a and it's a 10-year effort from today i believe Saad Massani, thank you very much for making time to speak to us today thank you and I'm sorry for the satellite interference in that cross. It is coming all the way from Carvel, after all.